Hello, welcome back to Court of the Cut. So I am on the Cowan branch line. This is a branch line that ran from the GWR at Chippenham train station in that direction and runs towards Cowan in this direction. This plays a very important part in the story today. This runs down through the Marden Valley and just over to our left, which you can't see, uh, is the River Marden and then what was the branch canal for the Wilson Barks Canal to Cowan. So when it's drawing footage, Hazeland is on the right, you've got the canal runs to the left hand side of the wood, the river runs through the middle and the branch railway on one is on the left. The lane leads down and, and routes its way across the top of this mill and then up across the canal. Just up from the mill pond, uh, you come around a corner and you've got the old inlet here, would have come under this uh, little bridge that's here. And then up into Hazeland woods themselves. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, trespassers will be composted, so this is private land. Do not come down here without permission. I'm Tara, I work for Avon East Trees. Um, I'm the project coordinator for this site here at Hazeland. Uh, Avon East Trees is a tree planting charity. It was set up in 2019 uh, in response to the climate emergency and the biodiversity crisis. Um, so uh, this was set up by our founder, Nikki Jones, and she started looking for sites in order to plant trees on in the Bristol Avon catchment. So we're walking now between the Marden, which is uh, just over there. You can see the back of the uh, mill pond there and the actual canal line was up just in here. I'm going to walk down a little bit because it's quite overgrown up here, so there's not much access to this part of the line. But it's 34 acres of uh, what was this, uh, ancient woodland. There's still quite a bit of it left now, but in the, in the war periods, a lot of it was cut back for, for farming. So this is our first site, Hazeland. Um, bought in 2019, we started the planting um, 2020, 2021. We've done three years of, of tree planting here and planted 10,000 trees. Um, we plant with the help of volunteers. So if you're interested in coming to help, um, have a look on our website, Avon Needs Trees. Um, we also have public engagement events. So we've got family days, um, bat walks, that sort of thing. Um, I should add this site was bought with the help of Heritage Lottery funding. Here we are on the first stretch. So there's water still in a lot of this. There are dry patches, so the clay is still holding out to some degree. So the Act of Parliament was applied for in 1795 for the Wilson Barts Canal. Construction started in 1796 and carried on to about 1810. But this bit, the canal's always opened in sections, and this bit actually opened in 1801. There's a good reason for that. So in Cowan, there used to be a company called Harris's Bacon. The factory in Cowan uh, was founded about 1770 and used to, uh, obviously, back then, horse and cart to, to bring goods to market. And you might be able to get a ton with a, with a horse and a cart on good ground, but the reality was most of the tracks were, weren't that great, so you, you lost weight all the time. So you would probably be able to move maybe three quarters of a ton at very most. Canals came along, and although slow, you know, you're traveling three to four miles an hour, you could, you could carry about 20 tons on a barge. So places like Harris's needed the canal there really. It gave them great op opportunity to move stuff. By 1863 the railway came along uh, which you would have just seen at the beginning of this video. That oh, that was the branch line uh, which was eventually taken over by GWR and uh, they could carry a lot more weight and by about the 1850s trains were already going about 75 miles an hour so you were able to move goods very slowly just very quickly. Just on the other side we have a mile marker which reads I think it's 10 miles to Sevington. We will cut back across there and have a little look. There's not many of those left. Just a little bit in we've got another board. It's just talking about the Wilson Bites Canal and this one and the woodland itself. So uh, you can probably see just up through here is a clear field. This was originally part of the ancient woodland that was uh, like I said destroyed during the wars for farmland. Uh, they've done some planting up here. Uh, this is like the middle field uh, and then there's another field higher up. Uh, just here behind the sign now you can see the signs of a wharf. You can see the brickwork. So this wharf isn't marked on any maps, but there were so many built in places just for servicing local landowners, local businesses and stuff like that, uh, for more income for the canal company. So we're walking now towards Cowan. This is probably the clearest section of this canal. There's not a huge amount of tree growth in here. I'm not sure if they've cleared some or if it's just been quite lucky in how it's fallen in. So we're walking down here to try and find an aqueduct. I came down in a week to meet Tara from Avon East Trees. I found what I thought was the aqueduct, but it just didn't quite tally up. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. Uh, so we actually, what we found was a spill weir. So we come to the end of that section in water and it kind of goes, there's a little bank there, the canal's just behind there. It comes around the corner here. But this is what I found the other day. Now I was looking for the aqueduct and I thought I found it. So it looks like there's a dip down there. 
And there's a dip over there. I thought this is just backfilled from an old stream and it's the aqueduct's kind of falling in the bottom. I couldn't quite figure out why this brickwork was here so high. The only thing I could think of was it was the banks of the stream where they'd shored up with brickwork. But going back and finding on maps, I found out this is the spill weir. So this is um, Fisher's Brook, which just sort of ran down until you can see the, the straight sides of that there. So just here on the canal would have come around, water would have overflown down here. So any excess water in the canal would have flown down to the brook and then the canal would have run off across to the aqueduct. And this brickwork runs right the way down through here and then goes down to the drop down there. And you've got some signs of brickwork over this other side as well. You can see the edges here as well where it curves around here to go into the canal. So this water would have run down here. It would have been dug out a bit more than this and dropped down into the little gully just down there where I think we'll find the remains of, a, of an aqueduct. Now if you haven't seen my previous posts, uh, Christian's back there recording. Christian runs a couple of YouTube ch channels. He's got a vlogging channel which is Christian Thomas Vlogs and he's also got a really good meditation channel, sleep meditation and stuff like that. That's massive. You should definitely click the subscribe button. I'll put the links in the bottom for him. So I think we're here. I can see a, see the canal run through here, look. And then you can see, uh, yeah, you can. You can see the stream going under. So that'd be Fisher's Brook. Uh, I can see some little bits of brickwork there actually. So I'm gonna drop down there and see what I can find. So you've got signs of the aqueduct here, look. You can see the brickwork. It's just across here, there's the straight edges of it. I've got no information online about this. Uh, I don't know when it fell. You can see the brickwork just over there as well. Most of the aqueduct is probably living in the bottom of the stream. This aqueduct must have been very wide on the stream. You've got the brickwork right across there. And that runs from that corner over there. You can see piles of it. And you can actually see brickwork further up. Now that's upstream, so there's no way the current would have sort of taken the bricks up. And then runs all the way to where we were just filming all the way back there. Maybe 40 foot. It's just trying to get down to the outlet now. Again, of the spill wheel which is uh, it's very overgrown actually. Oh, but we have some nice brickwork there. So that would have been one side of the aqueduct in the spill weir. As far as I know, it survived the entire canal because uh, the canal itself was abandoned in 1914 and mainly because of in 1901, the Stanley Aqueduct collapsed, which caused a breach. It was a stormy night. The side went on it, emptied the, the canal quite a few miles between pounds and effectively closed the canal. They still carried on with local traffic from Swindon uh, onwards and then some sort of chipping and wharfing back. But you couldn't go from Malcham up to the River Thames anymore or to the to the Cotswold canals. You can see, hopefully, the side, the other side of the aqueduct. I don't think we can get there. Uh, they've got Canigri locks just up here. Uh, we're going to see if we can get to those now. So we've jumped back to the railway line now. Uh, as I said, this was a, a branch line. This was taken over by the GWR, but this wasn't built by Brunel. It does take you onto a point about Brunel and canals. So it was quite an interesting one. So Brunel himself, he loved to build his railway lines next to a canal. And there were several reasons for that. The first one being that it was flat land generally. So wherever possible, the contour of the land was followed. So Brunel loved that. But he also loved the fact that a canal was there. It meant he could take spoil away from site. He could bring in materials for the site. And Brunel's railways were very, very level in the way he built them. You'll see there were embankments everywhere. There's very little difference in height between Bristol and London. This meant that the line was flat and the trains could go faster. There, there wasn't any steep inclines for them to have to climb. So the only time the, the Wilkes and Barks really made any serious money to pay uh, dividends to the shareholders was when railways were being built and the canal was was used to transport those goods. They just had no chance with, with the, the amount of load that they could carry and the speed that they could carry it at. So we left the railway track now looking for our next thing. Now we were only just up behind those trees there at the aqueduct, but because of the stream going through there through the brook, we couldn't actually get through. So up in these trees here somewhere, there should be a couple of locks. So I found what looks like the canal bed, but I think we're roughly in between the two locks here. While we're looking for it though, please uh, please click that like and subscribe and uh, click the bell button. You'll hear about future videos. We also offer memberships now as well. So we've got uh, two levels. We've got narrowboat and wide beam. Narrowboat you get drone videos and wide beam you get uh, behind the scenes stuff. But here we are. This looks like a lock to me. Yeah, beautiful.
So this looks like it's the other way actually. I thought the locks were going down, but they're obviously not. They're, uh, they're going up towards the cow. So this looks like the old ring wall, possibly a sluice there, but it's, uh, it's very full. So uh, just down in here, I'm not sure what it is, but this camera might tell me a bit more on editing. I'm not sure if that's just where there's been some collapses and some, something's dug in, or if that's actually something to do with the maybe the, uh, the spill weir or something like that. I thought it was a sluice, but the gates are, are further up um, and we got the lot the wrong way round, so it's definitely not that. You can see how narrow these locks are. If you've watched any of my Cotswold stuff, I just released a 360 video, which showed me walking through the lock. And uh, it's quite surprising how, how big it actually is. Gotta be a bit careful here, because I'm kind of on the wall, the lock there. I think that's the uh, recess for the gate just there. I was under the impression they were dropping down towards Calm, but this definitely looks like they're going up. This is incredibly overgrown. But yeah, here's the top of the lock here, look. All running through. And then it's probably far too overgrown to see the other end. There's not much sign of the wall here, so I assume that's collapsed at some point. So this is the top of the two locks. Let's go find the, look, the bottom. So I'm just trying to find lock number two, which I feel I may be in, or at least very close to. There's very little on this uh, line. On the line, is you can find little snippets. But this looks, this looks locky here. Yeah, there's brickwork here. Here we are. You can just see in there, there's po possibly a coping stone on the top there. I'm not sure. But yeah, so this is lock number, uh, well, the bottom lock. Um, there are three locks all together on the branch, one of which is in, in cow in itself, dropping down. And there weren't any locks then until back to Stanley Junction, where there were two deep locks, right before the junction, between the aqueduct and the junction. There's a lane there which feeds to the sewage works, so I think it's been backfilled. I would say this is a recess for the top gate here. You can see it slightly steps back from the main wall, just kind of there, and then drops in. And that stone, yeah, there we go, look. So that stone is curved. So that would have been the uh, lock gate sat in there, with, like the corner post of the lock gate. And then the wing wall of the lock would have come out this way. So this is the wing wall here. So these locks are doing about 70 foot long. So we'd have been somewhere close to the end of the lock here. See a lot of brickwork down there. There's the old canal line through there. Most of it's been lost under the site in this section and that will take us directly round to the aqueduct. Thanks for watching, huge thanks to Waverly East Trees for allowing me access to the land. It's been a really interesting area to record. I've loved every minute of it. So uh, yeah, have a great day and please get in the description and see all the links.